am a five foot motorcycle mm-hmm. riding, mm-hmm. cigar smoking, whiskey drinking mm-hmm. risk taker. Um, and that's that is me. I am all of those things and then some. Um, but um, at my core, I am a uh, an entrepreneur. I'm a hustler. Um, I love a challenge. Um, and I love helping others. And so for me, you know, to be able to do what I do, which is, is I guess the best way to put it is I party with a purpose every day. What up, though, Black Friday family? Welcome back to another installment of the Black Fridays podcast. I'm joined once again by my lovely wife, Mrs. Amanda Turner. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. And of course, we are continuing our Black Wedding Vendor series where we are talking to all the folks who help make our day super special. And we want to expose them to you in hopes that they can do the same for you in whatever special events that you have. So just want to surround you all with more good people who are doing good business. So today we have from Cigarden, none other than Mo. How are you today? I'm wonderful and so happy to be here. We are very happy to have you. Um, you. Very excited. Cigarden was a surprise um, for Denzel for Mm -hmm. our wedding. He loves to smoke cigars occasionally. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I felt like he wanted, but when we started looking at like budgeting and stuff like that, it was like, ooh. Nope. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, let me see how I can make this happen. So um, I did a search um, for cigar or mobile cigar bars on Google and Cigarden came up and I reached out and Mo was on the other end. Um, And it was an amazing experience from there forward in terms of service and just uh, customization. Uh, We had custom labels on the cigars Mm -hmm. um, and just overall great experience. We got so many rave reviews from our guests about the cigar bar. Um, So thank you again. Well, thank you uh, for having us be a part of your very very, very special day. Um, we count it a, a, an honor uh, whenever anybody calls us, especially for a wedding. I mean, most of our bookings are for special occasions. Um, so, I mean, it's it's an honor just period that they would even include us. But it's just something about weddings, as you all know, mm-hmm. that, um, you know, just to be a part of that etched in stone and mm-hmm. then the memories of you and your guests um, from now until forever. Yeah, uh, It's an honor for us. So thank you for having us. Thank you. Definitely. And I love to ask the guests who come on the show to introduce themselves in terms of how would you define yourself? How would you uh, introduce us to who you are, your background and, and what you're about? So if you were to read my bio, I think it starts off something along the line of I am a five foot motorcycle mm-hmm. riding, cigar smoking, whiskey drinking, mm-hmm. risk taker. Um and that's that is me. I am all of those things and then some. Um, but um, at my core, I am a uh, an entrepreneur. I'm a hustler. Um, I love a challenge um, and I love helping others. And so for me, you know, to be able to do what I do, which is is I guess the best way to put it is I party with a purpose every day. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoy what I do. I love what I do. I'm able to help others um, in what I do. And I'm ha- able to uh, help put a smile on other people's faces. So um, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. I'm a single mom, have always been a single mom. My daughter's 27. So it's been me and her against the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard Beyonce say on a little clip that I saw on IG the other day, um, that's my bloodline on the front line. I'm like, I'm stealing that. I love that guy. So um, if you were to go to my shop right now, Shade Cigar Cafe, my daughter would be there running the shop. Um, It's she and I against the world. And I love it. Nice, nice. And then did you pass down your love of cigars to your daughter? You know what? She is slowly getting there. And Mm -hmm. it wasn't anything that I ever pressured her to do, of course. Um, But she realized in working in the business, both at the shop as well as in the mobile business, you have to have a certain knowledge of cigars, obviously, as Mm -hmm. well as you have to be able to genuinely speak on the experience of smoking. And so she took it upon herself to start smoking. She's definitely not a heavy smoker. um, And so, you know, I I let her take her steps the way she needs to. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, I definitely see that she's been bitten by the bug. So. Uh, yeah, she's getting there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. For me, it's a very nice, and I, I'm I'm like a fake cigar smoker because I, I literally <laughs> have like maybe max two or three a year. So it's very like I I'm right. in the mood and I'm like, okay, yeah, I could I could go for a cigar if it's like a special occasion or something like that. But it's very relaxing. Like from people who do it on a more regular basis, like my mentors or people that I know that are into cigars and like different types and collecting, like. 
they're like it's a it's kind of like a um like I said, it's, it's relaxing. Like for me, my thing is sometimes I like to play video games and that's just kind of like, I don't have to think much. I just can kind of do something. And then that's what it seems like it is for a lot of people who like enjoy cigars. It absolutely is. Um, it's, it's very relaxing. It makes you slow down. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that I tell, like what I call a newbie, uh, you know, a person that's just trying to, you know, smoke cigars for the first time or just getting started. Um, I tell them it's it's not that cigarette that you see people outside mm-hmm. in the cold puffing <laughs> trying to hurry up. It's not that. <laughs> cigars are meant to be savored and enjoyed and they cause you to slow down. And in this world, you know, and in this time where we're all running 100 miles an hour, mm-hmm. you know, it's not too often that you can just like sit down and chill mm-hmm. and a cigar makes you do that yep. and if you don't do that with a cigar you will pay the price and <laughs> yeah. it is not very pretty so um yeah you can definitely get sick if you you know yep. smoke it too fast and yep. we've all been there mm-hmm. um but yeah it causes you just to sit and relax mm-hmm. which is a beautiful thing i love it i love it and we'll get more into the uh the lounge and then also uh cigar then, but i want to introduce you to my favorite part of black fridays which is freestyle fridays <laughs> So, Mo, I hope you know how to rhyme. Now, you give my ass a rap, sir. You saying what, what you. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I don't know. We about to find out. I guess. Hold on. Okay. So I'm I'm joking. So <laughs> freestyle Friday is a random assortment of questions. They're all about you. Okay. So you shouldn't get them wrong, and we just ask that you answer each one and you answer honestly. Okay. All right. So. For starters, because you do ride motorcycles, what's your favorite type of motorcycle? The one I have, well, the two I have. Um, I have a Buell Blast, which is a great beginner bike. Um, and then I also have a Honda VTX 1300, which is for me, because I'm I'm a little shorty doo up. Mm-hmm. It's a fairly nice size bike for me, but I love it. Um, it is smooth, I can handle it, but at the same time, it demands my respect, because I never would want to be on those two wheels, just you know, willy nilly. So mm-hmm. it's that Honda VTX for me. Nice. What would be your favorite either like trip that you've taken or one that you dream of taking on your motorcycle? Oh, so, you know, I don't have a desire for a long road trip. And so like Mm -hmm. those, as you say, the real motorcycle riders, (laughs) they laugh at me because I'm like, look, let me get a good from Farmington Hills to to downtown Detroit. That's long enough for me. Um, Yeah. um, What I would envision and whether or not I would ever have the guts to do it, I don't know. But, you know, you see in California, you know, the the roads, the the two lane roads that's right off the, the cliff and, you know, it's overlooking the ocean and. I could totally, totally see doing mm. something like that on my bike. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. What would you say is the most random job you ever had? I know you say you're a hustler, entrepreneur. Random job. It, it wasn't a job. It was more so something I, I chose to do, just trying to figure out, you know, I was I sold art. So, you mm. know, like it was a, one of those in-home art things, you know, you get people to book a party. And you, you show all of this, you know, art and act like you know something. Yeah, that was so random for me. <laughs> yeah, that was random. <laughs> what is your whiskey of choice? Ah, my whiskey of choice. And I have to say this, Uncle Nearest. And mm. I say that because I was just um, hired in as the Uncle Nearest brand rep for the state of Michigan, like within the past month. Congratulations. So, yeah, congrats. Uncle yeah. And, and, and I say that it is a phenomenal whiskey. For those of you that don't know the story behind Uncle Nearest Whiskey, Crazy, he yeah. is the first um, noted black uh, master distiller here in the U.S., um, mm-hmm. credited with teaching Jack Daniels everything he yep. knew about uh, whiskey. Mm-hmm. With that said, before Uncle Nearest, Jack Daniels mm-hmm. all day. And anybody that knows me, they know. It's, Which is technically yeah. Uncle Nearest. Well, yeah. it's, uh, it's not, but it's, it's some right, connection. Right, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, but both are very, very good whiskeys. Mm-hmm. But Uncle Nearest right now, um, they're at a point now where they're starting to roll out their whiskeys that they've been aging since they started the company four or five years uh-huh. ago, whereas mm-hmm. before they were sourcing it out to someone else. So what what's on the shelves now is theirs that mm-hmm. they've been aging. I can tell the difference, and it's mm-hmm. phenomenal, phenomenal mm-hmm. whiskey. So 
Yeah. I would love to know anybody in history, dead or alive, they come into the cigar lounge, they get a chance to hang out with you for a while, like let's say half a day. Who would you want to sit down and have some cigars with? Harry Tubman all day. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, I think she was just a beast. And I would love just to hear some of her stories and to learn what gave her the courage and the guts uh, that she had. So all day, Harry Tubman. That would be fine. That rolled off easy. Yeah. Didn't it? I was ready. Yeah. Look, I'm ready. I'm ready. That would, that would be fire. Yeah. No, no pun intended. Yeah. But, uh, right. But you successfully passed Freestyle Friday, so congratulations yeah. to you. It seemed like it was pretty easy for you. So thank you for engaging in the randomness. But want to go back into the the uh, your journey and. I would love to know what got you into cigars. Like, how did that start for you? Oh, man. <laughs> no, um, an ex-boyfriend, actually. Mm -hmm. He used to smoke cigars all the time. And I'm just like, okay, well, what's the big deal with these cigars? Mm -hmm. um, and so I tried one. I can never remember my first cigar. I still, to this day, don't know what cigar it was. Um, I know the cigar that got me hooked. And that was an Oliva V, uh, Siri V, Milanio. Um, I was sitting on the beach in Aruba and smoking that, and that's when I was hooked, that I do know. But, um, so yeah, just him, you know, smoking it, looking like he was enjoying it, relaxing, all of that was intriguing to me. So tried it out. Um, definitely didn't smoke as much back then as I do now. Um, funny part is he and I are still very, very close friends. Mm. And um, to this day, I mean, I know way more than he knows about cigars, so he comes to me and, asked for, you know, advice about cigar selection or humidor, you know, what's going on with my humidor? Why isn't it holding the humidity? So on and so forth. So that's, um, that's interesting to me, but I credit him with all of that. Absolutely. Wow. And in terms of your pa passion for cigars, like how did it grow to the point where it's like, I want to do this or in terms of educating people and mm -hmm. When you start, when you realized you were hooked, like had you already started educating yourself about cigars more, or what got you into the actual education aspect? Definitely of it? wasn't educated at the point that I was hooked. Um, what intrigued me and really got me started on the path of doing it as a business um, was seeing more and more women starting to smoke, mm -hmm. and seeing that they didn't know what they were doing. Um, by this point, you know, I had taken up enough of an interest, you know, to, to look, you know, when I wanted to know something, I knew how to research it and, you know, Google something in a minute. Yes. Um, and so I love to tell the story that uh, I was at a, a bar, a local cigar lounge here. It was two sisters sitting at the bar and I was there by myself having a smoke and they talking in their conversation, whatever it was they were talking about was juicy because the neck was going and, you know, <laughs> all of that was happening, right? So one of the girls picked up her cigar. And it had to be, for those of you that are in the cigar world, you know, it had to be an 80 ring gauge. So it was a big cigar. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, all right, sis is handling this big old cigar. Well, she picked it up. She put it to her mouth. And she literally, it's going to sound crazy, y'all, but she literally kissed the tip of it and put it down. And I was like, what was that? <laughs> so from that moment, I was like, okay, if we're going to do this thing, girls, ladies, let's, let's, you know, let's know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I actually ended up booking that same uh, venue and I did my first Cigar 101 for women. So my whole thing at that time was really educating women. Still is my thing, but now, of course, I'm like, I open it up. Whoever wants to know if there is knowledge that I can share, I do share. Um, I learn something new every day. It seems like I'm always on a quest to learn more. Um, so it was that initially that got me started. As I started researching more, I gained an appreciation for the background of cigars, looking at these families that, you know, it's been in their families for generations. You know, when we think about slaves, you know, on the tobacco fields, you know, all of that, that to me was intriguing and it helped me to um, gain a much better appreciation when I smoke a cigar. Um, there's over 300 hands that typically touches a cigar from the time that it's the seedling or seed is planted to the time it makes its way to the shelves. Um, in your local cigar shop. Mm -hmm. So just the thought, all of those people have had something to do with this cigar that I'm sitting here and I, I have the the, the privilege um, to be able to enjoy. So then when you look at an ashtray, you go somewhere with a bunch of, and you're not a fake smoker just because yeah. you smoke, you're an occasional cigar yeah, smoker. Occasional. Like <laughs> but when you see, you know, those you know people that leave, you know, uh, uh, over half of the cigar, cigar. Mm -hmm. sitting unsmoked, it's like, wow. Such a waste. Now, granted, not every cigar is great. You you know, mm -hmm. you don't want to torture yourself to have to smoke it. But <laughs> That's a fact. again, it's that appreciation that really, really got me started in on the path of wanting to learn more and do it as a business and share knowledge. 
So you get to that point where you and it's I'm, I'm assuming the garden like this iteration of Sigarden is the one, it's not the exact same, but you know what I'm trying to say, like, was it a business before Sigarden or was it initially always Sigarden? And how did the evolution of that take place? So my, I also have a uh, an event planning business, okay? Mm -hmm. I specialize in corporate events and, and nonprofit. Uh, I do work with nonprofit organizations. I'm not a wedding planner or baby shower planner. That's not me. Um, so initially I rolled everything under, and that business is called Mohen and Associates. Mm -hmm. I rolled everything under that. So again, I had the Cigar 101. Um, I was doing uh, tailgating down in Eastern Market for the home Lions, uh, mm -hmm. Lions home games. Um, and that's really, really, which, you know, what kicked things up a notch for me. Um, and so for me, when I stopped to look, figure out, okay, what do I want to name this thing that I'm doing? I'm thinking to myself, where do I like to be when I smoke my cigar? You know, just try to picture it all in my head. Aside from Aruba, my backyard is my favorite place when it's, look, when the grass is cut and the bushes are trimmed. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, I love the greenery. I love that that nature feeling of being able to look out, you know, and I live out in, in Farmington Hills, so I'm liable to see skunks, uh, dog on rabbits, everything Deer, else running yeah. through my, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, and I love all of that, to see all that. So, to me, it's, it that's that whole garden thing. You know, I'm not, I definitely don't have a green thumb, so I'm not planting anything, but mm -hmm. it was that garden thing, and to me, that's that whole just you know, serene, peaceful. So, all right, so garden, 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 and hey, pot out. Mm -hmm. and that's how that kind of came to be. Um, but again, it started off as something, you know, under, rolled under that other company name. Mm. And then uh, again, the garden was born 2017. And then Shade was born 2022. Shade Cigar Cafe. So now, got all three of them. And how did you get the ball rolling with Sigarden? Like as far as the the mobile aspect of it. So like, what was the uh, the startup phase of Sigarden? Like, how did you start booking clients or get all the the resources and things that you needed to actually go out and execute on these opportunities that you had? Yeah, um, it was look. What's Nike's um, tagline? Just do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's what it was. I mean, literally just jumped into it. So again, doing you know those tailgating um, events down at Eastern Market. Um, not re really even understanding like pricing and, and um, profit margin. I didn't understand all of that at that time, but I'm like, all right, this is what I want to do. Nobody else is doing it. Mm -hmm. So I saw a, a, a open space in the marketplace and I'm like, I'm going to jump right up in there. And so that's what I did. Um, because of, you know, all that I've done in the event planning world, and I've been in that world for over 20 years now, and I know, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people know me, definitely was able to utilize some of those relationships, definitely able to utilize those, those skill sets um, to do what I do. Um, and then I continue doing the um, the ladies uh, cigar event, which has now morphed into it has been rebranded as Girl Chat. So we've been doing that now for what, four years? And um from that, of course, you know, you get that word of mouth, word of mouth. Um, but it was definitely a, a grind, you know, in the beginning, as far as, you know, wherever someone would let me pop up, I would pop up. I didn't mm -hmm. charge a fee because for me, I'm like, I'm just trying to get in there, mm -hmm. get the name known. Now, evolution. Grump. We're to a point now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I get people to, I still to this day get people, so we want you to come out. Okay, well, go to my website. Mm -hmm. These are my feet. Well, you want us to pay you to come out with cigar? Uh, yeah, yes, I do. I sure do. <laughs> yes. I require that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much kind of a, the short version of how I got to where I am with cigar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As somebody who does not smoke cigars, what makes a good cigar and like what are what's probably the first thing you tell someone in a cigar class like specifically your girl chat or mm -hmm. ladies classes so first and foremost what i tell everybody is everything about cigars is personal preference mm -hmm. and I, I can't stress that enough because you will get some cigar snobs out there that will say oh you smoke flavored cigars that's not a real cigar that's not true. It is tobacco, just like all those other ones. They just happen to put and infuse, you know, some other things in it to make it taste better or mm -hmm. different, whatever. Um, I typically will start someone off that has come to me and asked, you know, for advice. I start them off with a flavored cigar. And the reason I do that is because tobacco and cigars are an acquired taste. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to do anything that's going to deter you from wanting to try it again. Who doesn't like something that tastes good in their mouth? Mm -hmm. So I usually go the route of a flavored cigar. Um, and a part of it, too, is 
building up that trust. I want them to look at me as that subject matter expert to know that, you know what, Mo said I should try this. So this is you know, the path I'm going to go on. And then they come back to me. So then if they show an interest in, you know, elevating and getting into the non-flavored cigars, which they don't have to, but if they do, then I put them on a path that's going to slowly migrate them out of that flavor. It's not going to be, okay, you smoking this tutti fruity today and then tomorrow is <laughs> full blown, you know. Mm -hmm. No, we, there's a, you know, it's a progression. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's usually the kind of the path that I take. And, you know, I let them, you know, you call how fast you want to go okay. or how slow you want to go. Mm -hmm. You call what size you want to smoke. Mm -hmm. um, I got some big old fellas that come to me like, you know, Mo recommend a cigar. And I give them what's called a lincero, which is a very thin cigar mm -hmm. and very long. And they look at it like, oh, that's the cigar for girls. Yeah, okay. And then they smoke it. And I remember this one guy gave him one and it was what's called a Maduro. So it was a darker, you know, more robust um, and bolder, you know, type of cigar. Mm -hmm. He absolutely loved it. Loved it. And then when I explained to him the significance of it being a thinner cigar versus a fatter cigar, mm -hmm. it made sense to him. And now you can't tell him nothing. Mm. So, yeah. What's the cheat code between cigars and cognac or cigars and whiskey combos? Like what's some what's some 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 heat out there that people might not necessarily know about? Because usually you're having a drink when you're having a cigar mm. nine times out of ten. So like what's some what's some good combos between cigar types and, and whiskey or alcohol? You know, it, again, I go back to smoke and drink what you like. People come to me all the time. You know, what, what makes a good pairing? I don't like saying, oh, you should pair this with this because mm. of the. Do you like that? Do you like that? <laughs> well, you know what? Put them together. Let's see if you like them together. Mm. Um, but for me, so I, when it comes to the cigars, I like um, notes of cedar. I like coffee. I like hints of cocoa, those types of, you know, warm notes. Um, when it comes to my, my whiskey, bourbon, cognac, I don't like anything that's too, too sweet, but I don't like something with that fire that's going to burn my esophagus either. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm happy to find that, you know, I'm able to find that that happy medium um, and bring the two together. Um, but again, at the end of the day, it's really smoke and drink what you like. I tell people in a minute, don't sleep on coffee and cigars. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing experience. Wine. Um, I have a number of people, my regulars, I call them the crazies, at my shop that drink tequila. So I, I don't do tequila. That, that's I did wild. that. I, that cigar and tequila is wild. They love it. And there's some great tequilas out there. Like mm -hmm. I've tasted some that like, wow, this is really good. I can't drink a whole glass of this, but the flavor <laughs> of it is really good and it goes well and complements the cigar. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's again, it's all about personal preference. But don't be afraid to try something different and True. something new. True. Yeah. yeah. So I would love to talk more about uh, So Shade Cigar Lounge mm -hmm. uh, and how did that come to be? Because you went from Cigar Den, which is mobile, and then uh, now having a brick and mortar. So like, what was that experience and, and that uh, trajectory to going to the, the brick and mortar route? And I believe recently you celebrated. It's been over a year now. So yeah. congrats on that. Thank you. Thank you. And so, yeah, we'd love to know how that came about. So I would be remiss if I did not mention the Loft Cigar Lounge, which is in downtown Farmington, which was my first brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. um, I was a, um, a partner in establishing the Loft. And at the time, um, and, and I give God all the credit for everything that has ever happened to me with all of this. Um, um, I was given the opportunity to buy into that partnership and to establish, it wasn't open yet, but so to establish the Lost Cigar Lounge um, back in 2019. And so um, bringing in, you know, what I knew, you know, about cigars. And the, the funny part is that the guy that was my partner Who's still a good friend of mine. Um, we met each other literally three months before we opened the doors. Wow. wow. Isn't that crazy? So we shared the same accountant who brought us together and was like, hey, you know, Mo has this expertise and, and experience. He had already been working to try to get the shop open, get the lounge open. He's like, you two need to sit down and talk. And we were both like, yeah, no, don't want a partner. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to bring him order mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we were both on both sides like, hey, and we've both known him for like double digit years. So he was like, shut up, sit down and talk. And so we sh shut up, sat down and talked. He took me into the space. So I was able to see his vision, fell in love with the idea. We signed on a dotted line. Three months later, we opened the doors. Um, so I, I was there for two and a half years. Um, again, 
and and we had discussed before opening the lounge that this isn't going to be a place that I'm going to be here forever. Mm -hmm. This isn't my dream. This, this is your dream. Mm -hmm. God has brought me here to help you, apparently, you know, to fulfill this dream and bring it to fruition. So that's what we did. Um, so he knew, you know, that at some point Mo was going to go left and, you know, go do her own thing. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. And so um, it, while it was a surprise to many of our customers, it was not a surprise to he or I, because, again, that's something that we had talked about. But in that two and a half years, I definitely was able to learn so much. I mean, so much. It was crazy. Um, neither of us had had experience in, in running a lounge or a bar. So we were just kind of like fish out of water trying to feel our way around with everything. Mm -hmm. And so we figured it out. And this business is thriving to this day and it's doing very well. Um, so I definitely, you know, took a lot of what I had learned there um, when I decided to to, you know, go off on my own. And so I will tell you, with the state of Michigan, in order to legally operate your mobile business, at least this is what I'm told from the state, mm -hmm. you um, have to have that commercial, you know, brick and mortar space. Basically, they want to be able to, you know, trace back, you know, where these cigars are coming from. Yep. Did you pay your taxes on them? Right. All of that stuff. So mm -hmm. I knew that when I left. Um, loft, the Loft Cigar Lounge that I was going to have to have a brick and mortar of some sort. Um, my ideal place was just like a little in and out little shop. I just really needed somewhere where I could store my cigars. Um, yeah, make some money on the retail side, but have never had the desire to have a bar or lounge and mm -hmm. still do not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's, just, that's real talk. Yeah. Um, and so the crazy thing happened was I finally found a space it was ideal. It was in a great location. All It was just, you know, for me, it was perfect. I was in. We were about maybe three weeks away from opening, you know, had all my decorations and pictures up on the walls and all of that. And the property management company comes to me and says, well, unfortunately, we need you to move. There was a large uh, space in the plaza, which is where I'm at now. But I'm like, well, what do you mean? Why? And so apparently there was some legal issues that they had failed to uh, realize or whatever review before we signed my lease. So um, they asked me to to move over to this larger space. So I'm like, OK, you know, by this point, I would put so much money right. into everything. So mm -hmm. I agreed, moved over again, giving God all the glory because that opened up some doors for me and, and things that I was able to do that I really wasn't even thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, so right now we have. Shade Cigar Cafe, and I tell people we're not a bar, we're not a lounge. We do not serve alcohol, but you get to bring your own, which to me is even better. Um, I'm gonna be there tomorrow. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, it is a cool, chill place. I mean, it's a place where if you're, I try to make it a place kind of everybody, right? So we do not smoke inside. However, I have a smoke tent out in the back. And when I tell you we chill in that tent year round, got two fire pits out there. Um, when I left to come here, it was people starting to come in that was in the tent. Um, so while those folks are out there smoking, those people that maybe don't want to be in the smoke, but still want to kind of be out for the night, grab their bottle or whatever, they can chill on the inside. Mm. Um, inside is a very laid back, relaxed atmosphere. Um, always got some type of cool music playing, whether it's jazz or something. Um, I try to have the lighting just right because I'm a light freak. So, you know, candle, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, you can be that person. You can be the person, Hey, I need to get some work done. Let me grab my laptop. I want to sit in here and get the work done. Then I'm gonna step out in the back and, you know, smoke my cigar, um, group, you know, gatherings, whether it's, you know, a meeting, you know, it's our slogan is we're about cigars, coffee, and community. Mm -hmm. And that's where that community piece comes in. And that is that I want it to be that gathering place where anybody and everybody can just kind of come and hang out, whatever you like. Love it. That's very. That cool. was a long answer, wasn't it? I'm no. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate being able to soak up all the knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, so you have been in entrepreneurship for a while, mm -hmm. and you told us about kind of like the impetus of Cigarden and how we got to Shade Cafe. What I know, you also have an event business, corporate events, mm -hmm. but. Was that what you were doing prior to Cigarden or what space were you in um, career wise prior mm -hmm. to deciding to? So mm -hmm. when I graduated college, 
a while ago, um, I took a job as a an intern with a local marketing firm in Dearborn, by which Ford Motor Company was their primary client. Mm-hmm. I worked there for probably about, I think, 13, 14 years. By the time I left, I had worked my way up to account director. So I had a, um, I co-managed a team of 12, directly managed six under me. Um, doing event marketing so that whole event planning thing that had been you know in my blood and all of that and i was able to do what i actually went to college for which a lot of people can't say that yeah um so uh did that while i was there so the one thing that i left out when you said how do i describe myself i'm definitely a dream chaser Mm -hmm. definitely a dream chaser my my biggest fear i think in life is leaving this earth having not tried something that i wanted to try or had an interest in so at one point in life, <clears throat> I thought I wanted to own a full service salon and spa. Mm. So I'm driving down Southfield Freeway. I see a building that's a salon with a big four lease sign in it. I'm like, okay. I go in. I'm like, okay, they have all the equipment and everything. I knew nothing about nothing. <laughs> about nothing <laughs> when it came to the whole salon thing. I went and I leased this building out and I had a spa for a, it was about a little less than a year. It took mm-hmm. me that long to realize that was not my ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, but I tell people, especially young people, what I, I lost, you know, several thousands of dollars through that experience. But what I gained and learned about myself was that I was fearless. And that's something that I carry with me to this day. Um, so I did that for a spell. Like I said, I was the art dealer for a minute. I mean, that wasn't a full time gig, but um and then, so after I left the marketing firm, I ventured out on my, out on my own. That's when I started Mohan and Associates. So single mom, five-year-old daughter, out here in the world, like, what the heck am I doing? But that's what I did. And so um, did that for numerous years before taking on another job, whereby I um, had an opportunity to work for one of Ford's um, advertising agencies um, mm-hmm. of record. And so worked there, I think what was supposed to be like a year turned into like three years. Um, was a great job, great money, um, worked on a lot of international accounts, um, did some really, really cool things, but it wasn't what I wanted. That's mm-hmm. where that we were talking about before we got on here, pivot with a purpose. Mm-hmm. That's where for me, one of my biggest pivots um, came. Um, like this, this isn't for me, this isn't what I wanna do. So I went back out. Mohan had still been, you know, going mm-hmm. all that time, but I went back out and then I had gotten to a point. I remember it was one going into the holiday season. That's usually my slow season for the events. Cause I was diff- never out there pounding the pavement, wanting to do anybody's holiday party. I don't know. I want to party <laughs> myself. <I don't> know. <laughs> so this particular year, I remember asking God, okay, God, just give me something, some type of little job, you know, that's going to pay well for three months in and out. And then I'm back on the grind, you know, after the holiday or whatever. And he did exactly that. Mm -hmm. I remember going to, what's it, uh, Robert Half, I think is a job placement agency or whatever, Mm -hmm. going, seeing the ad or something from them. And they ended up placing me at a uh, a marketing firm that coincidentally serviced Ford. Could not get away from Ford. I guess I didn't need to. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so was there did that you know that that contract for three months at the end of the three months they came to me and was just like we really like your work you know we want to offer you a full-time job I'm like well already then <laughs> and so um i took it knowing though that it wasn't mm, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and so i took it y'all i lasted probably in the full-time part mm, maybe three weeks I'm like, this is not it. Mm-hmm. And so I had to go back and, and tell them, thank you so much. And the lady's like, well, what do you mean? I just brought you a <laughs> No, I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, that's, you know, did that. And and once I left that job, I've been out, you know, grinding on my own ever since. But the, the, the key, I guess, in all that message is each of those things I was able to take something from that I carry mm-hmm. with me to this day that it helps me do what it is that I'm doing. So I'm so, I'm immensely grateful for all of that. Speaking of that, as a fellow marketing professional, I would love to know how has your experience in marketing helped you with your current business ventures now? Man, we it tremendously um, because I think I see things that um, the average person probably doesn't see. That when I say average person, that person without that type of experience, mm-hmm. um, I'm able to at some points look at my business as if it was that big agency Mm -hmm. or as if it was forward um because i know where it is i'm trying to go with this thing so um it has helped out 
big time. I think it has definitely helped me to be a differentiator um, from everybody else and certain things that I do. I'm so not a social media guru, but I think I do a decent job at it mm -hmm. um, and trying to build up interest. And I mean, I just I think um, it has helped to develop my eye even right down to photography, what it is that mm -hmm. I want to show, I make sure, I try to make sure everything tells a story. And that's something that I got from those jobs. I love that. And I, I think that that's definitely my approach also. Like, even with my stories on Instagram or something, mm -hmm. I won't post in a certain order because I'm trying to tell, like, yep. a certain story of the sequence of what I put in there. So even when I make reels, all that type of stuff, like I'm trying to trying to put together a story. It makes sense to me, and I just hope that people are able to uh, to pick up on it. And do you have any gems that you might be able to, to drop or a secret sauce that, that you have for like marketing or what people should consider as they're trying to better market them either themselves or their business? Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it a gem. I mean, it's, it's the thing that a lot of us, you know, should be paying attention to, the things that you shouldn't be putting out there. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's just as important, if not more important than what you are putting out there because mm -hmm. people build a perception based on what they see. They will build their own story based on what they see, not even knowing you. Mm -hmm. And so um, just being mindful, you know, about what you're putting out there um, mm -hmm. on the personal side as well as the business side. They don't need to know everything about your business. Right. Um, so you just need to make sure that you're the author of your narrative and just, you know, building out that story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that I hear throughout your story and your journey is, of course, you're talking about being fearless, but also how like the skills that you take from one space to another, but also just being willing to just do it. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna figure this out. What, like, how do you, did you always have that confidence in terms of just like business or just like, oh, I know I can do this even if I don't know how to do it right now? Mm -hmm. Or like, what, how did you get that confidence? Because that's so key. Cause some people do it scared. They like, yeah, it might not be confident. They just like, I'm gonna do it. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's always been in me in in some form or fashion, and I give that credit to to you know all of the the family members that have come before me. I mean, I remember my grandparents. I I come from a long line of entrepreneurs, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. So I've mm -hmm. always seen nothing but hustlers in my family, you know, out grinding, doing their thing um, and being happy. I mean, they may have mm -hmm. had issues. I'm sure they had problems, but, mm -hmm. you know, as a kid looking at them, it didn't look like it to me. So, mm -hmm. um, so I always saw that. I think part of my confidence um, grew from one of my teachers, my favorite teacher in the whole wide world, Miss McGee, Marion McGee. She was my one of my instructors at the Bright Hop Votex Center. Um, and she poured into me as if I was her own child. Mm -hmm. And we're still close to this day. And um, she was a feisty pistol. I mean, all those ladies <laughs> actually at Bright Hop Votex Center were some pistols. And I mean, I loved it because I was able to look up and see these strong women. I mean, we had a, a, a black female principal that ran the school, you know, all the, the instructors and the teachers, you know, it was it was really, really inspiring. <clears throat> Excuse me. Inspiring to see. Um, so I think all of those things definitely, you know, have just fed into me. I mean, outside of just jumping out there and just doing it, scared or not. Like, mm -hmm. you know, as long as I had at least halfway of a plan in my head, you know, I just wasn't jumping out there willy nilly, but yeah. just half of a plan. I'm like, all right, the rest of it will come together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thinking about that with your experience and working with larger organizations like Ford and then some of the other things, activation and stuff you might have done over the years. Do you have any advice for folks on how they can go after like corporate clients or corporate partnerships? Because I think it's I want to say it's easier than people anticipate. But like you said, it's one of those things where if you do it, you might figure out like there's there's more opportunities here that I've, I might have thought before. Yeah. You know, for me, the biggest thing is relationships. Relationships, relationships. I mean, yeah, you might hear about the you know story of Joe Schmo company or whatever, a small company that jumped out and looked up and got that opportunity. But just like the number of people that make it to the NBA, really, what you know mm -hmm. was. But for me, building those relationships is so critical to helping you to get to where you want to go. Um, so I mean, the the biggest thing is whether it's social media, whether it's making sure you're in the right room with the right people, um, making sure that you know, hey, sometimes you might have to do something and not charge for it, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but just so that you can get your work known. Um, all of those things to me kind of work hand in hand. But that relationship, once you can get your team of cheerleaders, um, you know, together that are out being your mouthpiece, talking about, you know, hey, Denzel did this, da, 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 da. 
you know, once you can get that together, I mean, it, it kind of cuts down on some of the work that you have to do. Mm -hmm. So that's what's worked for me. Love it. You mentioned that um, one of your biggest things is being able to at least try for all the dreams that mm -hmm. you have in terms of, so we're, we have the garden, we have shade. Do you have one that you'd be willing to share for like your next step or something that you're looking for in the future? Um, I, I haven't formalized anything right now. I got a bunch of ideas in my head um, that one is, is, me expanding the cigar and brand and the shade brand mm -hmm. um, and just in the cigar world, but it's really going outside of that cigar world. It's more, and I hate to say it because this word to me is just so, not cliche, but oh my gosh, lifestyle, mm -hmm. lifestyle, lifestyle, you know, mm -hmm. but it, it's, it is, it's one yeah. of those things for me, again, to be able to continue to do all those things that I love. I love to travel. I love to eat. I don't love to cook, so y'all don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say, um, one of my things that I did want to try, I have a, a, a an online cooking show that I've not done an episode for in a while, but it's still out there. It's called mm. By No Means a Chef. Ah. And it's about making simple, easy, delicious recipes. You know, really taking something um, that you maybe didn't make from scratch, but making it look good and it tastes good. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you made it in five minutes. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> um, but no, taking so taking all those things, you know, I'm I'm getting more into the whiskey thing now. Mm -hmm. um, love wine. I leave on Thursday to go to Napa. Mm -hmm. Cannot That's wait. That's gonna be a good time. Love wine. Um, so just bringing all those things together um, and figuring out how I can package it in an experience, um, whether it's them, you know, somebody physically experiencing these things or just you know online experience, whatever. Um, but in a, in a way that's that hasn't been done before. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm kind of racking my brain with doing right now. So we'll see what happens. I look forward to it. Yeah, likewise, likewise. <laughs> and for the people who want to pull up to uh, the Cigar Cafe, if they want to pull up, uh, if they want Cigar to pull up on them, mm -hmm. where can they find you? How can people get in touch with you and, and what's your website, all that good stuff? Yep. First and foremost, the website is you can either go to CigarDetroit.com or Shade Cigar Cafe Detroit, which is as long as I don't know what, dot com, <laughs> takes you to the same website. Um, we're in the process actually of getting our website redone right mm -hmm. now. I'm hoping to launch that next week. The one that's there now, I did myself. Y'all, so don't go with any great, great expectations, <laughs> but it, it works. <laughs> You'll be seeing something new in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. um, the address for Shade Cigar Cafe is 27632 Middle Belt Road. Farmington Hills, Michigan. We're located right at the corner of Middle Belt and 12 Mile. We're in the shopping plaza. Um, and I tell everybody our hours uh, for the cafe, Tuesday through Saturday. Well, let me say Tuesday through Friday, 3 p.m. to 8. Mm -hmm. Saturday, we open at 12, close at 8. Those are my published stated hours. However, <laughs> <laughs> I tell everybody, always come around that back where that tent is at because it might be long past eight o'clock and just because that open sign is off in the front doesn't mean we're not back there smoking so okay. <laughs> many nights we're back there until 11 o'clock at night so on just chilling having mm -hmm. a good old time so always drive around the back of the building to see if we're back there um we're of course on social media um cigarden on facebook cigarden detroit on ig I'm not messing with that TikTok thing yet. I've given that to my daughter. I think we're on there, but I've not okay. posted anything. Yeah, my brain can't handle that right now. Okay. Fair so. enough. <laughs> Makes sense. So we really appreciate you coming to the podcast and appreciate you doing good business with us as far as um, servicing us during the wedding. And uh, yeah, I don't think that we, Amanda would be able to speak to that better than me, but uh, as far as, you know, just making it special that, so it was a whole, it was a surprise to me. I don't think we talked about that uh, here on the show, but I did not know. I talked about doing a um, cigar lounge during the wedding, but Oh, yeah, we did talk about it earlier. So, yeah, wasn't necessarily thinking it was part of plans, but being able to, you know, get that pleasant surprise the day to win was amazing. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Oh, we are so happy to have been a part of it. I, first thing I said to you when you met me downstairs, you know, sorry, I couldn't be there, you know, mm. but I have a team and I have to, if you don't mind, shout out my please, team. Please, please, yeah. shout out the team. I, I have a team of nine other people that help me do what I do. I won't go down their names, but you guys go on my Facebook, you'll see their faces. When I tell you these people are ride or die for cigarettes, Garden and from O, um, it's true love back and forth. Um, they are my family. Um, we on any given night, we might have up to three events going on mm -hmm. at one time. So because of these people, I'm able to take these bookings and do what I do. 
And so I'm so grateful for them uh, for doing what we do. So unfortunately, I had to send out team members to mm -hmm. your wedding. I couldn't, you know, uh, be there myself. But I saw those videos and I saw photos, and um, I can tell I missed something really, really special. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was a good time. Yes. And shout out to the team. Thank you all yes. for making it an amazing night as well. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you once again for your time, and we, we definitely appreciate it. I will be pulling up to the, the cafe for sure Please in the near do. future, so I will, I will be out back with the, with the rest of the folks and, and learning more about this cigar world. And, um, yeah, I, I, I need to – it's more I want to get into about it, so it seems like this is the perfect place to do that. Absolutely. I'd be more than happy to uh, introduce you and, and help take you to your next level in your cigar journey. There we go. There we go. We got to elevate. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody watching, we tap in with y'all next time. Peace. Peace. Thank you.